me. And it says here that it, it, you know that power outflowing from his resurrection, the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you and I. It dwells in you and I. And I made a discovery of that back in about 1975. Lynn and I found that there is the power of the Holy Spirit. We'd been pastors, we'd, we'd, not quite, we were training, and we were in, you know, in, a, in a great church but never understood that. And finally, we, we, we received the power of the Holy Spirit. This morning, you might even have something that is weighting you down that you think that nothing and no one will be able to deliver you from it. I would believe this morning that God can. I believe this morning that God will, will, will deliver you today. It's only your doubt, it's your unbelief, it's your, it's your whatever that is stopping you from being released from that. God is wanting to set you free today. We had that freedom in the song, talked about in the song, about the, what the cross did for you and how we believe in him. And so it says that, we're going back to this verse, that you, I may know the power outflowing from his resurrection which exerts over believers that I may also share his sufferings. And that's another thing that I get a little upset about because there's so many people out there that I want to live in the power. I want to live in the power. I want to live in the power. I want to live in the power too, but I tell you what, I have to understand that there are sufferings that I've got to go through. There are things that, that I will need to work through because it says here, if I'm going to also know that power of the resurrection, I want to also share his sufferings as to be continually transformed. That I want to be transformed in spirit into his likeness, even to his death, in the hope that if possible I may attain the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while in the body. Hallelujah. And so I go on just quickly. Let's put on some things, folks. Let's put on goodness. Compassion. I'm not saying you don't have any of these, but you know, put on mercy. Justice. Don't these look a lot better than lust and envy and pride and so on? You're not weighted down by these. Matter of fact, you feel light as a feather because you're living in the righteousness of Christ, not in your own self-righteousness. Kindness. Patience. Joy. Faith. Humility. Forgiveness. Big important one. I feel it is anyway. Peace. Gentleness. Only a few. Probably most of you would recognise that these are the fruit of the Spirit. Time doesn't allow me to get into all that. And then, over all that. So you never knew that Kellogg's cornflakes boxes could, or whatever they are, could be worthwhile. It was for me. And over the whole lot of that is love, which binds us together, the unity of the Spirit. I believe God is speaking to us, to me. And uh, if we just turn back to, to verse 3 now. Just bear with me. Just go back to the verse 2. It says, looking away from all that will distract you to Jesus Christ, who's the author and the finisher and the perfecter of our faith. And he, for the, for the joy of obtaining that prize, was set before him and endured that cross. And then verse 3, it just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you may not grow what? So that you may not grow weary. You're feeling weary of heart? He died on the cross for your weariness. Are you feeling exhausted? He died on the cross for your exhaustion. Are you feeling faint? Losing heart? Relaxed, as it were. Oh, I'll just let it happen. 
That's what he died for. So that you may not have those things. I'm just encouraging you this morning that we're to look unto Jesus today. We have a cross. You know, one of the most significant things that, that when I came into this church was, yes, the people. <laughs> but a few months ago when we walked in, that was the thing that really blessed me was the cross. S stark. Very real. It's not glowing with lights or anything like that. It sits there. A constant reminder of the blood of Jesus Christ, his life on that Calvary. And I look at it and I see just how powerful it is, the crown of thorns. We need to look unto that cross. We need to look unto the, the finisher and the perfecter and the author. Look unto Jesus who blooded himself, became naked as it were, took all the shame so that we might have life. We go towards the goal. Did we go together, church? I want to go with you. I want to walk in that faith walk that you're walking in. I want to strip off anything that is going to hold me back or hold you back. There is a story that I like and I, I want to share it this morning. Of a father and a son who went out walking after a night where snow had fallen and it had settled quite thickly upon the ground and uh, it was their little exercise time and they off they went this father and this smaller son and walked around a few places and they came across a fairly large oval on which there were two goalposts at either end and um, and the the father said hey come on let's play a little bit of a game uh, we'll call him Johnny Hey, Johnny, we'll play a bit of a game. We'll see who will be able to actually make the straightest line from this end of the oval to the other end of the oval. Let's see who will be able to make the straightest line. And the little boy was so excited. He knew that he was going to be able to do that. He wanted to sh you know, prove that he was going to make the straightest line across this oval, which has, not got, all, has got all this snow. No one else had even walked on this oval so early in the morning. And uh, so, yeah, it's on. So his dad said, let's, on the count of three, let's start walking. One, two, three. So the little boy started off and uh, he was, you know, going to make the straightest line and he started walking and he got a little bit wobbly and then something happened over there. So he looked over there and then moved over a little bit more. And, and uh, so he was actually not even conscious of his father. He was determined he was going to be the one that would be the straightest along this oval. Got to the end and his father had told him that we don't turn around until we both get to the end and then we'll have a look to see who had the straightest goal, the straightest walk. And the little boy was so sure as he turned around and he looked at his line and he thought, oh my goodness, it wasn't straight at all, it was actually quite crooked. But when he looked at his dad's, he said to his dad, dad, Look at your way that you've walked. You have walked so straight. You have been perfect in the way, as it were, where you walked. And he said to the little boy, it's not a problem that you have done what you have done. I'm not going to make fun of you of what and how you walked. But he said, what I chose to do was when I stepped out from, the other, from that other end, I looked towards the goalpost. And he said, as I saw the goalpost in front of me, I knew that I'd be able to walk a straight line. And he did. He walked a straight path to it. It was a lesson that his little boy learnt, and I'm sure that he was able to, to grow in the faith. So this morning, I'm just encouraging you. Just encouraging you. Let's go towards that goal. Look unto Jesus. Just close your eyes now. And now is this opportunity of just getting rid of things in your own heart and mind. It may even be just the beginning. There might be a whole process. But just today, start the ball rolling. 
It could be that this morning you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. I'm encouraging you to, to make that stand and to understand that Jesus Christ died for all that sin which you think may not even be able to be dealt with, can be dealt with, shared it, showed you that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and he's just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This morning could be your moment, your time. Could be that we are a Christian and that we have been entangled by all these things. Confess them now before you, God. And also now, as we can, just set our eyes on Jesus Christ. Try to keep our sights on him. This is the moment, this is the, mo this is the time. And if there be anyone that needs to respond, I encourage you to do so. If there's something that you want to make straight and make right, this is your opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just command an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, just there be a release of your Spirit, that it might just go into each of our lives and continue its beautiful work and its penetrating work in our heart. Nuding us up for those things that are so that we are, are, are set free from and we then take on the righteousness of Christ. We dress ourselves with all that which is going to be good and wholesome. Be with us as we leave this place today. Be with us in our daily routine, in our walk, in our business, in our church, wherever we may be. Fill us with your grace, fill us with your power. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen.